I'm Russ Kinkle, and today we're heading back over to Mike Paletas to check out that new tank build. If you haven't been following along in the series, this is the third part of a multi-part series where we are following the setup and progression, thanks Bulk Reef Supply, right, of a new tank build that Mike's got going on. Where we last left Mike, he actually finished up the aquascaping and he was testing to make sure that that system could actually support life, using snails, things of that nature. So where we are at now is we are about 10 weeks after that and we're going to see, hey, is the system actually supporting life? What's happening there? If you haven't seen the other videos and you want to check them out, just head on over to AmericanReef.com and you can find them there. If you're looking for what I consider one of the best fish foods on the planet, just go to AmericanReefHPD.com. No spaces, right? Just AmericanReefHPD.com and you can purchase American Reef's HPD there. So now let's head on over to Mike's and see how he's making out with that 90-gallon ELO system. Mike Paletta. The famous Mike Paletta. Hold it, the Mike Paletta from the Reef Builder blogs, the Sunday blogs. Saturday morning uh, with Saturday, Mike. Saturday, Saturday morning coffee with Mike Paletta. Oh, you gotta read them, Russ, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Good deal, sir, so talk to me, what are we doing? We're doing an update. I mean, it's been 10 weeks since you were here last to look at this tank, mm -hmm. and we've made some changes, we've made some improvements, nothing is perfect as we know. Uh, you came in, fortunately, two weeks after the algae cycle. Even though the rock was cured for three weeks, we still had the algae bloom in the tank once the lights were put on, which is kind of amazing. And, I mean, everything was covered. Uh, I got the magnesium level up, which helped reduce it. Right, Brought right. the phosphates down a little bit, but I also added some urchins and some snails. And, as you can see, basically there's no algae, for the most part, left in the tank. A little bit on the back glass, but uh, every night the snails clean it out. And I've made some other improvements. Uh, the pump that came with the Elos tank, even at 6,000 liters per hour, wasn't quite enough to keep the detritus in motion. So I added an Ecotech MP40. So now there's nice flow throughout the tank. I may add a second one in the back to increase the flow even more. I haven't decided yet. I've put in a few tester corals. I've put in a few tester fish, including an Earl's Ras, mm -hmm. <laughs> because he was fighting downstairs with the uh, peppermint hog. But peppermint hog's coming up here. And hopefully, since he's been established first, and there's some other wrasses, it won't be a problem. I've put in the micro-bubbling system, which I know is controversial right now. Uh, the algae's going good. The uh, little micro or mini uh, RODI unit is working perfectly. I got the reservoir set up. The next things that are going on is the full Triton dosing of all the Triton chemicals is going in as I add the corals. And this tank will be good to go. The lights are cranking. You can see how nice they do. A good, great job of bringing out the colors of the corals. I know it looks a little bit bluer than it is. I have a little bit of sunlight, but I don't usually have this window open. But for today, I opened it to see that I can get a little bit of sunlight in the tank, too, if I want. So we got a lot of stuff to cover in a little time. Yes, we do. Okay, so what, you want to start with the RO unit first, then we'll kind of follow the flow, so to speak? Of course. Good deal. So to start with, I put the Mighty Might little uh, micro or mini or whatever RODI unit that fits perfectly under my sink. Like I said when I set this tank up, one of the things I didn't want to have to do was schlep water up the stairs for another tank. So basically all I have to do is flip a switch underneath here that I attach to my cold water line. There's a line that runs over to a five gallon reservoir underneath the tank. And while I eat my breakfast twice a week, I fill up the reservoir fills up the, the tank and I have no problems. I, I know to turn this off so I don't flood the house, which is the one thing you have to do because it doesn't have an automatic shutoff on it yet. I will eventually probably put one on, but for the time being, it makes it a lot easier 
to fill up the tank. You don't see the wires. You don't see anything. All Everything's hidden underneath the cabinetry. So it's a lot easier for me to maintain this tank and the water level in it than it was with the old tank where I had to bring up a five-gallon bucket of RODI water twice a week. And amazingly, this tank's only, uh, even in wintertime, it's only evaporating about eight gallons a week. So I only have to do this twice a week is flip the switch on. And it's, like I said, it's pretty easy. And it's off. And there's no dripping or anything else. And it just sits under there. So for the new hobbyists, again, uh, let's do a little educating and explain to them why you don't want to basically plumb that directly into your tank. Why you chose to have a... A reservoir, because one, I know of a lot of people that have flooded their tanks, they forgot the phone rings, something happens, and they fill the tank up with fresh water, and that's not a good thing, obviously, because these are saltwater creatures. Two, I want to have better control, and I also want to be able to test the fresh water where it comes out. Whenever the total dissolved solids start to rise, I know it's time to change the cartridges. So it's pretty simple to do that when you have it in its own little chamber, rather than when you're blowing it directly into the tank. And I mean, the, the top off systems now are so simple and so elegant. When the water level drops below a certain level, the sensors kick in, a little tiny pump fills it up, and you only have to lose a few milliliters of water. So it keeps the osmolarity or the salinity of the tank at a very consistent level, which is what you want. One of the things that we always want in our tanks is stability and consistency. We don't want things fluctuating up and down. And by having this simple little reservoir underneath, to top off as water evaporates out, it fills back in, it's easy peasy. So let's take a look at that reservoir. So in the reservoir, we've, we've, I've made a few changes. First, I've put a little live rock in the last chamber, hopefully to get some microfauna. But also, I've had the nano bubbler. And you're not looking to run a skimmer in the tank. That is, you don't want a massive amount of huge bubbles within the tank, which is one of the uh, let's say controversies in running the nano bubble system. Well, well hold it. What's the purpose of the nano bubble system? There, there have been some experiments and some wide usage of using nano bubbles. That is really, really tiny bubbles, most of which you can't even see, to purify or clean uh, dirty areas of ocean near uh, in Japan and sure. other areas. Sure. So the people that are are recommending this are now promoting to possibly do this in the tank. Basically what happens is the same thing that happens with skimming is that uh, dissolved organics adhere to the little bubbles. They then go to the surface, they then get skimmed out, and then your skimmer takes them out. So it basically makes your skimmer much more efficient, in theory. In theory right. So in my case, I've been running it now for approximately a week, and in that time, the algae in the tank has dissipated. Now, is it a function of the nano bubbles, or is it a function of the tank maturing? I don't know, but it happened pretty quickly and pretty easily, so I, I'm pretty happy with what I've seen with it so far. What will it do, because they're also promoting that it increases the growth rates of the corals because they slime, get rid of their waste, a lot of different things. So we're gonna see what happens there. So there's a little nanobubble uh, device. Basically, sure. it's the old air stones that we used to power our protein skimmers with on an air pump. It goes in the last weir or the last baffle of the chamber. Most of the big bubbles blow up to the surface. I have a glass plate above it so I don't get a lot of uh, salt creep. And the tiniest bubbles, which you can barely see in here, you can see them reflected by sunlight in here, which is the only way you really see them. I know I'm getting some nano bubbles within here. And you uh, can actually see them right now by your arm. Okay, you can just see these little tiny bubbles reflected in the sunlight. Uh, when the sunlight isn't on, you can't really see them. So as a result, I'm able to run this nano bubble system 24-7. Sure. I originally was running it just at night because I was running it too heavily, and I was getting a lot of bubbles in here, and it was irritating. Now that I've gotten it uh, finessed a little bit more to where I'm only getting the really smallest bubbles and you don't see them, I run it all the time. So we're, I'm going to run this for at least the next two to six months, see if I see the, the kind of chambers. I mean, as I said, this is an experimental tank where I'm playing with a lot of different parameters on it. So I want to see sure. what works and what doesn't. I'm trying the Triton system, which I've never used before. I'm not doing uh, any water changes in here. I'm stocking it only with frags. I got the first four frags in here from Sanjay's tank. I brought in some cultured chalices and other plate corals on the bottom just to have something on the bottom. Granted, those aren't frags per se, but they grow so slow they may as well be frags. So I brought in cultured pieces to put on the bottom. I even put a couple of uh, small bubble-tipped anemones, and they've actually gotten bigger just in the two weeks they've been in. I started with uh, roughly eight or nine fish in here. I'm probably going to double that to about 20, 
And that will be it for this tank. Now again, for the new hobbyists, let's go over that process a little bit, meaning that you just didn't chuck these corals in there. No, uh, I gave the rock two months to cure. That is, I did water changes on it. It was in a semi-dark environment. It had strong flow going across it. So whatever died, died. Whatever survived was basically a bacterial bed for the nitrogen cycle in the tank. That is to convert ammonia into nitrate, because ammonia in a saltwater tank is toxic, versus nitrate is not as toxic. So did that, put these in on the typical fiberglass rods that I did to try and leave an open structure, because in the old days we used to do rock on rock, and it basically looked like a fruit stand. Now you get a much more open plate. Right. I'm gluing the uh, coral frags into place, which I will continue to do through the rest of this week. I'll uh, probably have probably 30 or 40 in here by the time I'm done, which I know is a lot, but we'll, we'll take out stuff that I don't like yeah. as it grows because I never you never know what things are going to look like over time. Uh, there'll be, like I said, around 20 fish in here. The Triton system will be kicked on as of tomorrow, hopefully. The next thing that needs to go, I need to mix up the chemicals. I need to get the doser online. I need to plug that in underneath, and that'll add uh, the chemicals, and I will be testing. Sure. Once I have everything in, I will send my first test dose to Triton to see what they say is, are the water parameters. I test this once a week. I test alkalinity on here every day because that's what I do with all my SPS tanks. Uh, I'm hoping somebody comes up with a daily or a constant alkalinity monitor. That would make my life much easier. But until they do, it takes me roughly two minutes to test alkalinity because I do it so often. I'm pretty good at it. Right. So in addition to that, uh, Before you jump down there, let's go back to the stocking of the tank. Okay. Okay, when you first introduced, in other words, after you set kind of, you know, the rocks and all that, and we kind of had that videotape, how did you do it as far as testing? Like, what did you... First thing I put in were a couple Springer Eye damselfish, okay. which are, to me, some of the more docile damselfish. They're also a damselfish that has been quoted as plucking flatworms off of acros. So I put in something that I wanted to have in here that I will have in here. Uh... They, they're fairly uh, cryptic as damselfish go. Until you have a, about five or six of them in here, they don't really come out. In my other tanks, they're out all the time. In this tank, not so much. Right. So they went in first, made sure they lived for two weeks. I put in a frag of a Montipper and a frag of an Acro from downstairs. They're actually frags of frags. Let those go in here for two weeks. Everything survived. That was the acid test. Then I put in one anemone. Since anemone is like 99% water, if the water quality was bad, I would expect that would die really fast. There's now three in here. They're all doing well. So I have gone very slow. We're now well past the three-month mark, and I really haven't added a whole lot to this tank. I mean, I know some people want to do this in two weeks. I'm looking at this to be something that will be up 15, 20 years, possibly. I'll be an old man by then. Shooting these videos will be a whole new technology. But this is what... Uh, how I'm doing it nice and slow and I will have it as stocked as my usual tanks down the line but for now I'm taking my time sure. no algae no blooms the protein skimmer is working fine all the equipment's working fine so uh, for me it's now time to really start getting this tank to where I want it to the fun part of it right, right. is stocking the tank and I mean I have 200 frags downstairs <laughs> so I'll pick up what I want from down there a lot of it will be frags of frags just so I keep them so in case they do die, but I don't expect that to happen. Right. And we'll just see what the growth rates are under these lights, under these conditions, and compare them with what they're like downstairs. On the light side of it, they could look kind of blue. Are they your normal like 15k blues or what's there? I actually have them at around 12,500, but they look bluer than they are. Okay. Uh, it is blue, but it's not as typically blue. I usually run like a 14k, right? Right, right. But I've, I've tried to boost it up a little bit whiter. What's interesting is uh, Ecotech. I was Sanjay and I were there last week. 
we're actually doing a comparison of our tanks. We're trading corals with each other, and he runs his under max growth. I run mine under max coloration, or right. radiant color, as they call it. And we're looking at growth and coloration of the same corals to see the, the, what differences we see, because we both keep our water conditions pretty close to one another. Right. I mean, we're not totally devoid of nutrients. We have some nitrate, some phosphate. Uh, we run our alkalinity a little bit higher at around 10. Uh, we run our temperatures both about 78. Right. So for all intents and purposes, our magnesium is 1,400. Most of our water characteristics are the same. The only difference is we're even running the same lights. The only difference will be what uh, template we're using. Well, hold it. are you going from this Elos tank? or? And, and I'm going to also, the second comparison is going to be from this Elos tank right. down to the downstairs tank. So we're going to see what kind of growth we get and what kind of color we get here versus there versus Sanjay. Got it. So I don't know of anyone that's run that much of a difference. Granted, this is going to be a Triton tank, right. but I'm still going to keep the conditions fairly close to what I do downstairs. Right. So it's going to be interesting to see the differences yeah, yeah, yeah. in growth and coloration between the three tanks. Yeah, and it's if I remember correctly, right, now Sanjay doesn't have a sump or miracle mud on his, right? I mean, he's no. got a sump, but he doesn't have a miracle, doesn't miracle mud one. or any of the macro algaes or any of that stuff, no. right? So that'd be also kind of interesting as well. Yeah, but he does run substrate in his tank too. Right. So there are right, subtle right. differences. Right. Yeah, I mean, he's, his tank is now 10 years old, which amazes me. I would have bet four years, right. but it's now 10 years and he's never touched the substrate. It's the same substrate he put in 10 years ago. Okay, so to that point, let's go over the hardware a little bit. Let's go back down to that sump because uh, you, you wanted to talk about the reservoir and how that feeds and, you know, all that fun stuff. Right, it, it's, it's a fairly simple system. One, I love the Elos overflow because you can adjust it and it basically is completely silent. Unlike the old system, which constantly made noise and you heard that bubbling sound, yep. here it's pretty quiet. The only sound you really hear is the bubbling up as it hits the uh, piece of PVC that I have down there. Because initially what I wanted to do was have it come down, hit an elbow of PVC, then there were holes in the PVC. I was hoping to get the uh, Catamorpha churning. But the Catamorpha has grown so fast, it's basically one big block right. of Cato. So I'm now taking the, about a third of that out a week and pitching it because it grows so fast. And it's now growing fast in all my tanks. And unlike any of my other tanks, I'm not using Miracle Mud in this tank. This is the first tank I've run in 20 years, right. including my plant tank that doesn't have Miracle Mud. Right. So I'm following what Triton wants to do and run it with all their chemicals and see if everything's working the way they want. So this is the... the True Triton test, sure. Even I even used the salt they recommended. Rather than using Instant Ocean or Reef Crystals, mm -hmm. which is what I've used on all my tanks for the last 30 years, right. I've gone to uh, uh, what am I, Tropic Marin Pro on oh, this tank. The expensive salt. The expensive salt, because they said that's the closest to well, seawater. And the thing about it is, since you're not doing water changes, right. hey, who cares? It's yeah, I did it once. I filled it up. I still have half a bucket downstairs. Yeah, yeah. So the... Uh, right now, I, I measured the parameters. They're all where I want them to be. So everything's good. I haven't had to add any chemicals so far. But now we're going to go to the Triton method where the corals start to grow. They take out the chemicals, and you have to adjust them accordingly. Sure. So it'll be interesting from that standpoint. So the water goes from the top down to this first chamber. Into the first chamber where there's a PVC pipe that's plugged at one end with holes in it. Then it goes through a bed of Calerpa. Then that chamber is blocked off so that it then has to flow through the Cato, then flows through the Cato into where the uh, chamber is with a skimmer. And the skimmer is, is running fairly wet right now. It was running fairly dry, but I have no idea what changed it in the, in the last week, but now it's running fairly wet. So when you, when you say fairly wet, describe that to them. Rather than having thick looks like espresso coffee, right. it now looks like weak tea. And you didn't adjust anything. I have not adjusted anything. It's just as the process has occurred, I'm assuming that it was taking out the more brown gunk as the algae died off. Sure. So yeah. that's the only thing I can assume happened, but, you know, every tank is different. Sure. So not, then it flows over a baffle where the uh, um, nanobubbles are being produced. Yep. It then flows into a pump. It, the ELOS pump shoots off at about 6,000 liters per hour. I've actually slowed that down to where it's doing about 4,500 liters per hour because I want some more dwell time with the skimmer okay. and with the Calerpa. And I've added the Ecotech to increase the flow throughout the tank. And so uh, as far as that flow goes, right now the system come plumb with that one at the bottom, right? Right. And one at top. One at the top. So I'm still getting jets moving the water around, 
but then I have an Ecotech on the other side, and it's helping to blow the detritus from the back all around to the front, and it's being sucked out. As you can see, I haven't done anything. This is the amount of detritus that's accumulated in about a week, so not much. Right, right. Now, down the line, what I will probably do, since I'm not going to do water changes, is when I, what I would traditionally do when, with this type of tank is I'll put a sock on the end of my one of my old socks, right. attach it with a rubber band, and I'll go in with a hose, and I'll suck this out and draw, put it in the, into the sump. And that way I'll take the detritus out because I don't want a detritus tank in the tank per se because that's typically where algae starts to bloom. Hold it, so you're saying you take like what, a power head? Well, no, 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 I just take a sock on the end of a hose, oh. start to siphon, put it down there, the detritus gets stuck in the sock, I suck out all the detritus in the tank. And that way I save the water. Good idea. And the way, I mean, it works. And I mean, you could get cheap socks and you can either wash sure. them or throw them out. It's sure. up to you. Sure. I mean, not the socks that we typically use for cleaning tank, but I'm talking a pair of white cotton socks. And I mean, it, you can also use the filter socks too. Yeah, the problem is I don't really like sucking on those after they've had dirt in them. So on a sock that's been gone through the washer and stuff, I'm not quite as queasy about it. But overall, I mean, as you can see, this uh, cropper has now been in here for three weeks. It's done fine. This Montipro over here is done fine. There's one over on the side. They've, for lack of a better term, they've survived, which is the first test you want in a new tank. Because everybody's, I'm always per, petrified that whatever I put in is going to die immediately. Right. So whenever stuff grows, thrives, and has nice coloration, I know that I'm doing the right things. And so far in this tank, I'm pretty happy with how it's gone. The tank itself looks gorgeous. I mean, it's fabulously designed. The glass is clear. I mean, it's a nice piece of furniture. The sump space underneath gives me enough to do all the stuff I want. So to me, it's a, it's a perfect size tank for what I want to do. To me, the single most important lesson that you want to take away from these videos, and there are many lessons, right? But the most important one is take your time. You have somebody like a Mike Paletta who's a seasoned veteran, book author, etc. Right? It's taken multiple months to get that tank to the point where most of us would like to see it within a couple days, right? And he's doing that because he wants to ensure success for that tank, right? And again, to me, if you want to ensure success, not waste your money or time, then you want to take your time as well, right? And you can check out the other videos so you can kind of see other, the other lessons that he's going to share within this video series. As far as the new video coming up, again, we're going to follow it about another 10-ish kind of weeks, and we're going to see, hey, does the macro bubble thing kind of working, right? Is the Triton system kind of working? And we'll just kind of see kind of part progress from there. And again, luckily for Mike, he kind of tells it like it is, so we'll kind of see good, bad, or ugly, which is a good thing. And again, you've heard me say many, many times, give my sponsors a chance to earn that business, right? That's the premium aquatics, the bulk roof supplies, the tonsies, the ecosystems. Again, they are good, honest guys that deserve a chance to earn your business. So if you're looking for any kind of tank supplies, livestock, etc., give my sponsors a chance because I guarantee you, they won't let you down. I'm Russ Kickle. Thanks for watching this episode of American Reef.